Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, RQ Projects. I'm Roy, it's good to see you again. So, this video is a little bit different um, for two reasons. Number one is that my phone's ringing. I'll sort that out. That's out of the way. Now, as I was saying, this video is a little bit different. Two reasons. Number one is that if you watched the last video, you'd know I've been working away from home, so I didn't sort of get time to film a video. Second reason is that a lot of my tools are gone. Um, and the reason for that is because I've been working in areas of New South Wales that have been hit by bushfires, doing inspections on buildings that were impacted by the fires and I was down near a town called Cabago which if you're from Australia you would know Cabago is where the fires hit the hardest you would have seen it on the news it's a little town a few thousand people they lost like 40 houses um, a few really nice old antique buildings on the main street and that sort of thing um, so I was down at Cabago and I know a guy down there that I it is a chicken farmer and he lost like tens of thousands of dollars worth of tools and a shed and a tractor and hundreds and hundreds of chickens and all this sort of stuff so on the weekend on sunday i packed all my tools in the car and drove back down there four and a half hours south and gave him all my tools mowed his lawn for him because he's lost his mower gave him my chainsaw my angle grinders all my battery tools drills impact drivers hammers screwdrivers yeah he's got all my tools so that's the reason that this video is late or I missed last week or whatever, however you want to put it. But anyway, this week, some exciting stuff. I've got some paint and we're going to keep going with the body filler. Let's get to it. I'll just stop for a few minutes because it's bloody hot and the camera mounts a bit funky. Anyway, I'm pretty much done with fiberglass filler. So all the welds are covered now. The idea was I wanted to get fiberglass over the welds because that's an epoxy based resin, epoxy resin based product. And I didn't want any moisture to creep through if there was a pinhole in some of the welds. Especially like down here, this was a seam that originally had um, like a little seam filler from factory. I wanted to blend that seam in so that's gone. Um, and I just wanted to get a thin layer of the fiberglass over there just to cover it up, stop it cracking so easily and all that sort of stuff. And so I've blocked it out with a speed file. Um, this bad boy with some 36 grit on it. So this is really good, really handy. And it's really good to get just as the fiberglass is going hard, like before it gets hard properly, like after eight, nine minutes, block it back, get those high points off before it gets too hard. Um, yeah, so working through it. And now I'm going to move on with some plastic filler. Also at the front of the car, I've taken off the clips and the windscreen wipers and the heater tee. So where the heater is teed off the cooling system on the car, 
Um, got all that off because I'm going to start prepping this panel and around the windscreen to do to paint with the paint that we've got. So hopefully that'll be in the next video or very soon. So let's keep moving. Okay, so this bit's a little bit exciting. I have some paint. I've gone with acrylic paint because it's only for the inside of the cab at this stage. I also had to buy a paint tin opener, which is kind of sad, but I don't have any screwdrivers. Dan's got those. So, and I was going to make a separate video. Sorry, that's jumping around a lot. I'm trying to open this paint tin opener. I was going to make a separate video about giving my tools to that farmer, but then I thought, that's not what I'm doing it for. I don't want the recognition. I just wanted to help him. So the only reason I'm telling you about it is because it's an excuse, I guess. It's the reason that the video was late. Anyway, let's get to opening our paint. And this is kind of exciting. That's right, people. It's sandy top. So this color is Land Cruiser Beige. Um, it was really popular back in the 45 series, 40 series Land Cruisers. And it's made a real comeback recently in the 79 series dual cabs. Well, because dual cabs is all that they sell in 79s now. They still make single cabs and no one buys them. Um, so you'll see a lot of Land Cruiser sing uh, dual cabs in the beige, which is 4E9. A lot of people call it Sandy Torp. Um, but it's just Toyota beige. So I've got that and I've put it in acrylic because all that we're going to do with that paint is around here. Well, that's not the reason it's acrylic. It's acrylic because I'm doing it at home and I don't want that two pack dust everywhere when I'm finished because it's not good for your lungs. It's only going inside the car. So I'll do door trims sort of around the inside of the cab where you're going to see it. And then inside of the doors and underneath of the bonnet. I'll have a little bit to do along here and basically everywhere where I want the paint to be smooth because I'm not sure whether I've told you or not. It's going to be a Raptor liner finish on the outside of the vehicle. So main reason for that is I can't be bothered trying to get the bodywork 100% perfect. If I don't like Raptor liner, I can change it when I swap over to a rust free cab, which will be happening in a couple of years time. So it'll be a really neat looking finish. The Raptor line is going to be sandy top or beige 4E9. Um, and then for the tray, I'm going to do an Aztec silver, which is a hammer tone. So the bull bar and tray will be Aztec silver, which is like a hammer tone, gunmetal gray sort of color. Um, yeah, so that'll be neat. Anyway, let's get on to the bodywork. Hey guys, we're going to jump out of the panel work for a minute. I'm going to show you something really cool that I've been working on. I've mentioned it before. I've got my laptop down here. I'm going to set you up on that tripod and I'll show you the design of the tray that I'm working on for this cruiser. So I've been having a look around and sort of working on some designs for the tray for a while, for the flatbed tray, whatever you want to call it. Come up with a pretty simple design um, that looks pretty sleek. So what I've done here, and I know, I could have done this on screen record. I didn't, whatever. Um, what I've done here is screenshotted a Sandy Torp cab off the Toyota website, made the tires a bit bigger, put a bit of lift under it. Um, and that is sort of what I come up with a tr for a tray. Um, and it's sort of looking like that from the back. So it's pretty sleek, sort of some angled toolboxes. Um, it's gonna be a mix of like a hammer tone, dark silver and the toolbox lids and stuff should be it will be um done in the Raptor Sandy Torp as well. And then I've also been messing around with a bit of a trailer setup um, and just making sure it's all gonna match nicely so it's got the same sort of line with the toolboxes and yeah, so that's the sort of tray we're looking at. 
and we should be working on we're going to start building that in about sort of three weeks i reckon three weeks i should be finished in about two months the whole ute but that's sort of where we're going with the tray i've gone with some clearance lights just for a bit of a bit of truckness a bit of truckness is that a word yeah it is now and um i messed around with a few different ideas for like stencils to put in the grill on the um on the headboard but yeah it wasn't really wasn't really pulling me so i'm not sure what i'll do there but we'll um we'll work on that but yeah no it's a pretty cool little tray should come up pretty nice we're about sort of 2.3 long i think and i've gone for 1800 wide which is smack on the same width as the cab so that the um the little mirrors i've got will still work because i don't want to have to go back to the big ute mirrors that came with the car so so it won't have these big ugly coat hanger mirrors it's going to have nice little um trip carry mirrors which are a nice little one piece aluminium thing so yeah messing around with some some ideas there thought it might be something you'd be keen to see and um yeah stay tuned for that build guys so that's going to be it for this video guys tune in for next time we've got a bit of primer going on here it's just to stop the flash rust and i'll have to do that on the roof as well but next week on rq projects we're going to be painting the interior of the cab in sandy top and then moving on from there we're going to be doing the raptor liner fitting windows doors car builders, sound insulation, and slowly, slowly, the truck's going to start coming together. So stay tuned, guys. If you haven't already, subscribe. Hit the like button if you liked this video. Get the bell on. Get your notifications on. All that good stuff. Remember, guys, 100 subs. I'm going to be burning these tires off on the driveway, throwing sooty, smoky burnouts, as you already know. Cheers, guys. See you next time.